Hey guys, welcome to a new video. This video might be about a different topic than you're used to. Although, maybe not if you've been following the channel for a little while. This video will be about crypto, but not about the crypto itself, it's related to it, but I like doing server storage and networking related content, and it'll be mainly focused on those parts of this new crypto. Now, I've done crypto videos or tech related videos to crypto before, like a few years back I warmed my house while mining for Ethereum, and while recently a new project started, and that is called Chia. And Chia is a new crypto that doesn't use your GPU or CPU or anything like that to mine. It has a new algorithm they call the space and time algorithm, and basically what it does is you make plots on your hard disk. Now, this does require a good amount of CPU power, memory, and some NVMe drives, or SSDs, and with those plots you can then farm. But once those plots have been made, they don't really ask for any performance anymore, even of the disks. You just need to have them available to be proofed, as they call it. So it's not so much uh, mining for crypto, but they call it farming for crypto. And well, uh, <laughs> I basically set up my own farm. And uh, since I've been busy with this for about two weeks now, I'd like to make some videos because I think I have some good technical insights on how to build your plotter, that's the one that makes the plots, and then how to set up your farming network and stuff like that. In regards to networking or CPU to choose or storage, it's NVMe drives, very important because there's a lot of misconceptions out there and people writing guides, but they don't really know how storage works and what is important for these workloads. So if I can share some of my optimizations with you guys, well, that might be nice. And if enough of you guys respond, uh, I might actually do a full tutorial on how to set up a independent plotting machine to do the plotting for you, and then have a central farming setup like I've built for myself. Uh, let me know down in the comments. Now, should you subscribe to my channel? Eh, that's actually a bit difficult to say because yeah, I'm just in a, I'm just in a spare room here. <laughs> but that's actually a bit difficult to say because this isn't going to become a Chia cryptocurrency channel. We're still going to do a lot of LEDs. We're going to do more IP cameras this year and things like that. I mean, the new controllers are almost available very soon now. But uh, we haven't had server content for a while. And actually, I have plans for that because this little guy I purchased to do my server content, that's a Gemini Lake 4-core passively cooled, which has two network cards. Very nice. This is currently serving as my farmer machine. And then uh, over here, you can see, well, it's a bit dark. Maybe if I move away from the light, there we go. You can see two mini PCs. I was also using these boxes for plotting, but currently I turned them off because, especially with an M.2 SSD inside, they were just getting too hot and the NVMe uh, SSD was throttling and well, it just wasn't worth it. And I, I have two big plotting boxes now anyway. And these are actually for project HAHA. But, well, currently they have a slightly different purpose, but that'll be done in a few weeks and then we can resume that project. So yeah, I'm going to try and make some videos on, for instance, uh, what kind of, uh, oh, you can't see that. What kind of SSDs should you use? These are SATA SSDs. Here I have some uh, Corsair MP510s or some 980 Pros or some uh, Transcend 240S. Don't, don't get these. These are shit. <laughs> but there's a lot of things that come into play. So uh, I hope you'll forgive me for making content on that for the next two or three weeks or something like that. It's hot right now and I've been busy with it 24 seven a day. So it's hot with me too. And uh, well, normal videos and Quinboxed and LEDs and all kind of stuff will come too. It's just a little side venture, and I'd like to take you guys along. So let me know down in the comments. If you're new to the channel, let me know. If you are a part of the channel for a while already, let me know too. Thanks for watching. Bye. 
Okay, so first let's take a look at storage. As you can see here, I have eight times 14 terabytes, which are currently having plots written to and are being farmed at the same time. They're connected to my dedicated farming machine that's over here, and it just has a USB connection, but there is a caveat. If you use these USB drives and you get this variant, which has this, these two USB ports on the front, that means each drive has a hub in them, which means they present themselves as, I believe, three devices in Device Manager or, or on your USB bus. What that actually means is that your root hub and this little PC only has a single USB 3 X, X, CHI, I believe, XHI, I think it's XHI, root hub. And each Intel root hub can only have, poo, I don't remember from head, 27 devices. So although you could normally string up eight hard disks like this easily, because these have integrated USB hubs, they take up a lot more devices in your root hub than a normal hard disk without that feature would. So actually you can only hook up eight to this machine instead of being able to hook up a lot more. Of course, I didn't know that when starting out and these were the cheapest 14 terabyte external drives or 14 terabyte any drives that were available. So uh, I've made it work. Uh, as you can see, they're all plugged into a USB hub here. That is a seven port USB three hub from Orico. And that is kind of important because they use the VIA a USB 3 chipset, and I've had very good success with that. These drives have been going for about one and a half weeks now, and they haven't gone offline once or had any hiccups whatsoever. Uh, I do have some other hubs that I'm using. For instance, there is another Orco hub. That's been fine too. But there is a Sabrent hub. And while well, that has its own issues, because you'd think, oh, nice, 16 ports. Well, I can't have more than seven hard disks on it anyway. But internally, this hub turns out to be a four piece hub. So it's even worse. So I can only have five hard disks, even though I have 16 ports. So remember that root hubs, USB root hubs have limitations to max devices you can um, connect to them. And if your device has, well, the disk plus three, well, that limits the amount of devices you can connect by a lot. <laughs> also, I had to find a good power bar where I could plug them all in. But if we look over here, well, actually, nope, it's too dark. Hold on. There we go. We should be able to see a little bit better. If you see over there, I found a power bar where you can plug them all in at the same time. Now I did use the last socket, so I added another power bar. But these are the, let's see, Brennan Stool Super Solid 8. And they were about 15 bucks a piece from Amazon when I bought them. I paid 234 euros, so about 250 bucks for the drives. And that's not bad for 14 terabytes, especially because internally these drives have Exos X16 drives which is an enterprise class 14 terabyte drive. As you can see here on one that I opened up because well, as fate may have it, uh, actually one of the drives in my main server, as you've seen before, I know how to build JBODs and I know how to work with SAS controllers and I know all that stuff. But for this, this setup kind of made sense because well, it was the cheapest to get started with. Anyway, I shucked one of the drives and it has an X axles drive inside of it. And those by themselves are 400 euros, but if you buy them in a USB enclosure, they're 234. Maybe you get a little bit less warranty, but I can buy two for the price of one. So who cares? Anyway, uh, more of the setup. Yeah, so the power bar, I like these power bars. They're great. And I got them for a really good price. And uh, well, as you can see, I still have some discs uh, available. In the end, I'll probably end up with about 300 to 350 terabytes of total data. And probably at some point I'll shuck them and put them in a JBOD anyway, because at that point it might make more sense to keep it online. Now, I'll have all this stuff linked in the description. Those will be affiliate links, but if you use those, thank you very much. 
uh, but at least you'll know you'll get, be getting a working setup. And as I said, things like that root bridge and stuff like that are very important to take into account because a machine like this only has a single root bridge. Even these beefier machines like that also only have a single root bridge, while a normal PC like this one, which is one of my plotting machines, but that's for a different video, uh, that has three or four root bridges, so you could connect multiples of seven disks to it. Now, aren't external drives an issue regarding performance? Actually, no. And actually, for the plotting machines, it made more sense than trying to push it through the network. One of these machines, so I have a big, uh, big two here and big, whoop, big one, will push out about five terabytes of data per day. If I push that to a central server, that would be too much for a gigabit link. So although I started out pushing that over NFS to this little machine, it actually couldn't keep up and my plots were getting slower because I had to push them over the network. And well, the network was full 24 seven a day. So I reached the max speed I could plot at because of the network. So then I ran into my USB limitation and I only had a single root hub and I was like, okay, okay, that's fine. I'm just going to connect four to big one and four to big two. And then they, those can offload locally. They can achieve much higher speeds. So can you do even more plots a day? Now, plotting requires a lot of performance, as I said in the previous video, but we'll be deep diving into that a little bit more later. But once it's been plotted and it's on one of those hard disks, it doesn't really need anything much really. It just needs to have a decent latency. The reason for that is that Chia, the protocol, basically looks at a 100 gigabyte plot, but it only looks at the plots it needs to. So the blockchain sends out a request for a certain number block, and you can have one or more of those. That's probably the rattling you're hearing in the background. Once it finds that plot, it does a proof on that, but it's only 64 IOs. So that's not a lot at all. And as long as you respond within 30 seconds, you're fine. Now, with a well set up NFS network, like I have here, that is no problem whatsoever. And I can generally respond to the requests in half a second. I know there have been some reports online of not using NAS connected volumes, but I believe that was because that person was using very low budget uh, NASs and connected to a Windows system over SIFs and stuff like that. As I said, I've been running over NFS for more than one and a half weeks now, and my plot testing times and stuff like that have been more than adequate. You can see that in some log files. So this is my hardware setup right now. So I have disks connected to my plotters locally, so I can do the offload as fast as possible. But then those same disks are shared to my harvester so that it can harvest them as soon as they become available. And well, I have a little switch here, but that's just a eight port gigabit switch, nothing special. Now, as I said before, if you're interested in more technical vi videos about Chia and how to set up plotting and farming, let me know down in the comments. If you should subscribe, I don't know, this isn't gonna be a main topic for this channel, although we do more server storage and networking content from now and then. Uh, I do want to make a how to build or how to design or what design elements you should take into account when building a plotter video and maybe also setting up a farmer and some tooling around that if people are interested. So let me know down in the comments. Now, I'm not, also just a reminder, I'm not really looking at comments like, oh, crypto mining, you're ruining the world or crypto mining to the moon or something like that. I'd like to keep it at a technical discussion. This isn't about if crypto is good or not. This is about how to design a technical setup like with servers and disks and storage and network for a specific goal, whatever that goal may be. So even if you're not into crypto and or you're even against it, you might still learn a thing or two about how to measure IO, IO performance and how to find where your bottlenecks are. Anyway, that's going to be it for this time again. And well, as I said, let me know down in the comments what you think and what you'd like to see in regards to Chia and especially the hardware side of things. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.